Hey guys, today I'm doing a video about camshafts. A couple months back I posted a couple videos of me pulling some VG30 cams out of the pull apart junkyard and I thought I'd actually do a video about different camshaft options for the Nissan Xterra with the VG33 engine and really just kind of explain what is my cam plan here. So before we get into the details of different camshaft options for the Nissan Xterra, I want to talk just a little bit about the very basic high level overview of what the camshaft does. The camshaft is going to be in your cylinder head and that opens your valves to allow air and fuel in and let exhaust get pushed out to your exhaust system. It's going to be timed to your crankshaft by your timing belt. So there's going to be two main characteristics that define how your camshaft behaves and that's going to be one, the valve duration which is going to be listed on product pages typically in degrees of crankshaft rotation. So that's an important thing to note is that since it's a rotating part it's really going to hold the valve open based on a certain number of degrees based on how the camshaft profile is actually shaped. So at higher RPMs, when your crankshaft is turning really fast, the amount of time that your valve is open gets exceedingly small. Now the extra duration in a performance camshaft is what will kind of give it what they, they'll call a lumpy idle or having some lope in your idle. And you want to be careful without going with too much duration, especially for an automatic transmission, because you need to allow your car to idle without stalling out. That's not really much of a concern with a manual transmission because you just depress the clutch and disconnect the drivetrain from your engine. But for an automatic transmission, you don't want to go too high on the duration. So the second thing that will describe how your camshaft operates is going to be your valve lift. So the valve in a cylinder head is just like a poppet valve, so it just pops straight down to allow airflow in or out, and then it comes back up with a spring that makes a nice and tight seal. So the farther you push that valve down, the farther away it is from the actual inlet to the cylinder head, which means that you can allow more air to get into the cylinders. So before I describe the camshaft that I actually went with, let's talk about the different options. And we're going to start with the stock camshaft in the Nissan Xterra. The intake valve has a duration of 240 degrees, and it has an exhaust valve duration of 244 degrees. The valve lift is 0.354 inches, so that's going to be like the baseline of where we're starting with. So the typical entry level kind of performance cam for the VG33 is what they call the Euro cams. Those are available on 4x4parts.com and those have a 264 degree intake duration, 262 degree exhaust duration, and a 0.393 inches of lift. Now they're called the Euro cams because if you remember from my junkyard videos, the Z31 cams are actually directly swappable with the VG33, but the Euro spec Z31s that were sold in Europe originally came with this profile stock. It was kind of a more performance oriented camshaft. Now the American Z31s actually had a little bit more of a tamer camshaft that had less duration, same amount of lift I believe, but you could actually get the Nismo performance camshafts for the American Z31s, which basically was the same thing as the Euro camshaft for stock European Z31s. So the Euro cams are a direct Nissan part, so that is something kind of nice if you want to feel more comfortable about knowing that you have a factory quality, factory intended part. It's just that it's being repurposed for the VG33 and that shouldn't be a problem. So you can see from the lift, it does get a little bit more lift and it increases the duration quite a bit. So the next cam that I'll talk about is going to be Jim Wolf Technology. There's actually two different main cams that I've seen people get for the Nissan Xterra. That's going to be the S1 and S2 or Stage 1 and Stage 2. Now Jim Wolf Technology is a very reputable manufacturer for performance camshafts in the Nissan community. Their cams are made from cast blanks and they're designed with valve spring harmonics in mind. The JWT cams are a bit more expensive. Those are usually going to be about five to six hundred dollars depending on which set you go with. So the Stage 1 cam is going to have 260 degrees of intake and exhaust valve duration and 0 .440 inches of valve lift. So you can see Compared to the Eurocam, it's got a little bit more valve lift, but the intake and exhaust valve duration is right in that same ballpark in the 260 range. Now this camshaft is advertised as having you know, great mid-range power and torque, and it's supposed to be still an acceptable idle for an automatic transmission. So the Stage 2 cam from JWT is going to be 266 degrees of duration for both intake and exhaust, and 0.473 inches of total valve lift. This is, as they describe, the largest possible cam that you can physically fit in a VG33 cylinder head. Now for this type of aggressive cam, you do have to replace your valve springs with a stiffer valve spring. As a side note, if you look at 4x4parts.com, they're going to tell you that valve springs are needed on both of the JWT cams, but if you go to jimwolftechnology.com, I believe is their website, 
uh, they actually advertise as stock springs can be used on the stage one and you only need the new springs for the stage two. So the two JWT cams and the Euro cams are the three usual suspects when you get talking about camshafts for VG33 engines. So how in the world did I arrive at what I decided to do? So I got cam cores out of a 1989 Z31-300ZX. Now those cams have a duration on both the intake and exhaust valve of 248 degrees. The valve lift is 0.393. So you can see that the valve lift is the same as the Euro cams, but it's a bit less compared to the JWT cams. The duration is also less than the Euro cams and less than both of the JWT cams. So it is really just a very small step up from the stock Nissan Xterra VG33 cams. At the same time, I also didn't really trust putting you know, a 30 year old camshaft just in my truck. So that's where regrinding comes in. So there is a camshaft regrinding company out in California called Schneider Racing Cams. Interestingly enough, there's also a web store that specializes in Z31 parts. It's the ZStore.com. They have their own you know, regrind camshafts that they say, but it's actually a Schneider Racing Cam as I found out after talking to both companies. Their price was a little bit better. So what I ended up doing is I got my camshafts. I went ahead and mailed them in to the Z store. They went ahead and sent them on to Schneider Racing Cams and they did all of the regrinding and refurbishing and they did a parkerizing process which helps it on startup and break in. And then they sent it back to the Z store and then they sent it back to me. So why did I choose to do what I did here with my camshafts? And there's really three main reasons. Reason number one, because I can. Why not do something different than just forking over the money for parts that someone else has already done? Why not do something a little bit different? Two, is that because I went ahead and gone through a camshaft removal on a junkyard car, I already have a good experience with pulling the cam out and how it's gonna go on the VG33. I've never done a cam swap before, so before I did something this invasive that could potentially damage my engine, I wanted to make sure that I felt comfortable with it before I had too much money invested. And the third reason, is because I can save some money. Why not save some money if you can? So I spent 200 bucks for the actual cam regrind at the Z store. And I spent 20 bucks to ship it there, 20 bucks to ship it back. Plus I spent some money on miscellaneous packing materials and bubble wrap and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna have less than $350 on this camshaft uh, by the time that I get around to installing it. So the real question comes into is what profile did I choose to go with? And I went with their 131H cam profile, which is 262 degrees duration on both intake and exhaust, and 0.42 inches of valve lift. So this is actually comparable to the stage one JWT cam as far as those basic characteristics, but it's about half of the cost, a little bit more. So I am actually anxiously awaiting my cams to be returned to me via FedEx any moment now. Once I receive them, I'll go ahead and film an unboxing video just to give my initial impressions of what I think of the cams when I first open up the box and just to share this information with anybody out there that might be thinking of doing a similar type of camshaft project. But until then, thanks for watching and I hope this video helped clarify a couple of the different uh, camshaft options out there. You know, the three usual suspects are always a good choice, but there are some other options if you feel like using a little bit of ingenuity. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoy the content of these videos, and stay tuned for the installation video.